In the headlines of VTV News, National Assembly Standing Committee holds 33rd session in Hanoi. Da Nang continues to be top destination for living and visiting. And later on in our World News, Russian President nominates new Minister of Defense. Broadcasting from Hanoi, the capital of Vietnam, VTV News starts right now. Hello and welcome to these uh, VTV News uh, coming live to you from Hanoi. Are you with me, Lina Fatman? Here's the top news of the hour. The National Assembly Standing Committee commanded is a 33rd session in Hanoi on May the 13th under the leadership of Chen Thanh Mẫn, the Standing Vice Chairman of the National Assembly. During the three-day session, the committee will concentrate on uh, preparations for the legislature's upcoming seventh session. Lawmakers will examine the government's proposal concerning the assignment of the medium-term public investment plan using the state budget for the 2021 to 2025 period as well as the 2024 capital plan for tax and projects using the additional revenue from the 2022 central budget. At the meeting, the government leader explained that the government and the prime minister have closely monitored the market and proposed many solutions, such as requiring the issue of invoices for every gold purchase and sale transactions, investigating potential price inflation or manipulation, and accurately assessing actual needs. Should any violations be detected, the records will be forwarded to the Ministry of Public Security for resolution. Linking the progress of capital disbursement to the efficiency of public investment capital is essential as it creates spillover effects across various regions and localities. This linkage serves as a prerequisite for selecting and implementing projects and encourages ministries, departments and localities to accelerate project implementation, thereby fostering robust growth drivers for socio-economic development across numerous regions. The Fatsiam Urban Infrastructure Improvement Sub-Project in Kim Seon District, Ningbing Province is actively addressing issues such as environmental pollution and travel difficulties. Notably, this project marks the first implementation of the Urban Infrastructure Improvement Project. The local residents hope that they will have access to safe and clean roads. Ningbing Province has paid more attention to investment route work. By the end of April, the locality has dispersed more than 21 percent of its capital plan, higher than the national average. Once the site is cleared, we will promptly begin the construction process. Throughout this phase, we will also ensure the completion of quality management procedures and payment acceptance documents to facilitate timely disbursement. To date, the country's public investment capital allocated to construction projects has reached 4.5 billion U.S. dollars. This amount is equivalent to nearly 17 percent of the plan assigned by the Prime Minister. This clearly demonstrates the determination and responsibility of the local authorities. Thanks to these efforts, public investment projects will soon be operational without relying on investment from higher agencies or other capital sources. According to the Ministry of Finance, why the disbursement rate of public capital across all sectors is showing improvement. Several obstacles continue to hinder progress towards meeting the set goals. The 500 kilovolt a circuit three-line project from Guangchak, Guangbing Province to Phu Noi, Hưng Yen Province has seen some acceleration in its implementation. This project is crucial for national development and must be operational no later than June the 30th, 2024. The extended 500 kilovolt a circuit three-line project with a total length of about 519 kilometers and a total investment 
of nearly 900 million US dollars includes four components. Quang Chak Quỳnh Lưu, Quỳnh Lưu Thanh Hóa, Thanh Hóa Nam Định One Thermal Power Plant and Nam Định One Thermal Power Plant Phố Nối. The construction of these component projects began in October 2023 and January 2024. According to the Vietnam Association of Seafood Exporters and Producers, seafood export turnover in the first quarter reached nearly 2 billion US dollars, an increase of more than 8% over the same period last year. Although seafood exports showed signs of improvement at the beginning of the year, the growth has not lived up to expectations. Meanwhile, input costs and transportation fees are continuously increasing, causing difficulties for many seafood export enterprises. Faced with challenges and barriers in export market, seafood businesses need to proactively seek new partners, expand their markets, and develop value-added products. Currently, the company is launching new products, which are two products originating from Bing Dick, namely Viet Oak Stream and Red Tilapia from Dick Bing Lake. The company also aims to produce high-value-added products such as sushi. In recent time, the government positive actions such as value-added tax reduction policies and efforts to combat illegal, unreported and unregulated fishing have supported seafood businesses in exports. We enhance trade promotion activities to advertise products and boost exports to potential markets. We are focusing on developing fishery infrastructure. When investment is made in fishery infrastructure, it attracts nearshore logistic services. From there, they create major source of goods and become more active in production organizations. When there is an abundant source of raw materials, we can organize processing and improve the quality of products. Seafood exports are forecast to gradually recover in 2024 and become more positive in the second half of the year, with optimistic signals in the first few months of the year and businesses' attitude about overcoming difficulties. The export turnover target of about 9.5 to 10 billion US dollars is completely achievable. In the first four months of the year, cashew exports reached nearly 1.2 billion US dollars, an increase of 21% in value compared to the same period last year. The Vietnam Cashew Association expects cashew exports to reach 4 billion US dollars this year, as global cashew demand is predicted to continue to increase in the near future. Cashew nut exports to major markets such as China, the Netherlands, and the United States recorded strong growth. Among them, Vietnamese cashew nuts have been especially popular in China due to their stable year-round supply and quality. The trend of vegan and plant-based diets is also increasing demand for various types of nuts, including cashews. Fruit and vegetable exports in the first four months of this year exceeded 1.8 billion US dollars, according to the Vietnam Fruit and Vegetable Association. Durian remains a major contributor to fruit and vegetable turnover. Durian season began nearly half a month ago, and numerous solutions are being implemented. It is expected that this year durian fruit will account for 60% of the export turnover of the fruit and vegetable group. June, two hectares of durian in the Anzang have just been prepared for the first harvest. Thanks to the application of safe farming methods with planting area codes, they are qualified to export to China. In 2024, the country durian growing area will increase to about 150,000 hectares, with output expected to reach 1.5 million tons. If the garden area is expanded without complying with standard production process, the path to durian export will face many obstacles. I currently have around 1,000 meters of trees bearing fruit. Hopefully in the next few years, durian will meet this standard to command a high selling price. We have organized training and guidance for local authorities to improve awareness and skills for checking and monitoring issued growing area codes and packaging facility codes. Vietnamese durian is facing increasing competitions in the Chinese market Therefore, the quality and reputation of the entire industries are key issues. To ensure the quality of durian, one of the prerequisites is that durian must be harvested at the right age, while young durian must not be harvested. 
Because the price has continuously increased, understanding and awareness of general protection regarding quality issues, as well as unfair competition, greatly affect the reputation and quality of durian fruit. With the advantage of durians being available all year round, the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development said it is negotiating with China to bring officially imported frozen durians into this market to diversify products and increase export turnover for the billion-dollar fruit. In the Mekong Delta, the drought situation has improved with the arrival of fresh water and cooler weather. However, agricultural production has been seriously affected after a long period of heat and saline drought. As a result of the reduced supply, prices have increased. This has posed challenges for export businesses in fulfilling orders. This business specializes in purchasing fresh grapefruit and coconuts to serve the export market. The order was signed with the importer in advance, but now the business is struggling due to an insufficient supply of goods caused by the hot weather. Like last year's order, we can receive one container per day, but now it takes one week to ten days to fill one container. There is a serious shortage of raw materials. Prices have also increased by 60 to 70 percent compared to last year. When the sun is hot and the temperature is too high, the leaves of some fruit trees will burn, affecting the health of the plant. Farmers have noted that the southern provinces are experiencing a particularly severe dry season this year, characterized by prolonged heat and saline drought. It has forced farmers to prioritize tree preservation over productivity enhancement. The decrease in output has caused the prices of many exported fruits to increase. In some areas, people have to abandon their fruit to save the trees. Some gardens cannot produce flowers. In extreme cases, entire gardens may have to be abandoned. Dot. We focus our resources and utilize the best local capabilities to fight water sources for irrigating our current area. This is to at least maintain productivity, which will be reduced, but not significantly. Due to drought and salinity seeping deep into the soil, many trees are exhausted and dry. This condition will likely continue to affect tree health, making a decrease in output in the upcoming crop season inevitable. And before we move to the next part of VTV News, let's check out how the Vietnam dong is weighed against other currencies in the world market today. Coming up next, solutions discussed to aid Vietnamese affected by a Warsaw shopping center fire. And Da Nang continues to be top destination for living and visiting. Polish authorities will discuss solutions to support individuals affected by the fire at a shopping center in Warsaw, the capital of Poland. Many kiosks owned by Vietnamese nationals were burned down. The fire broke out early on May the 12th and quickly swept through the shopping center at 44 Mariwilska in Warsaw. The incident caused no casualties, but almost all the goods, mainly clothes, were burned. The cause of the fire has not yet been identified. The shopping center houses approximately 1,400 kiosks, of which about one-third are owned by Vietnamese people in Poland. Upon hearing the news, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Vietnam directed the Vietnamese embassy in Poland to urgently dispatch a working group to the scene. At the same time, they coordinated closely with local authorities and the Vietnamese Association in Poland to inquire into the situation and promptly initiate citizen protection measures. 
Vietnam's science and technology sector is celebrating its 65th anniversary this year. Over the past 65 years, Vietnamese scientists have made significant efforts in research despite facing challenges when compared to many other countries. Their dedication has contributed to greatly, uh, greatly to innovation and the development of the country. This very thin, light, artificial leaf functions as a solar panel. When exposed to artificial sunlight in a water environment, it converts the light into chemical energy stored in hydrogen fuel. Associate Professor Dr. Chen Ding-Fang led the research project with four published articles in international journals. Our research helps the community better understand the structure and mechanism of this catalytic layer and how to boost its activity, gradually replacing current platinum catalysts. Meanwhile, this nanosensor research, led by Professor Dr. Nguyen Van Hiu, has proposed a new and an easy controlled method of manufacturing this secondary nanostructure. The research explores new manufacturing methods of materials. The funding from the Ministry of Science and Technology to this project help us open up new research directions. These two scientists are among many others to receive the Tha Quang Biu Award, a prestigious prize given by the Ministry of Science and Technology for significant scientific contributions. In recent years, the award has recognized an increasing amount of outstanding scientific research published in prestigious international journals. Since its establishment, the number of reputable Vietnamese scientific publications has increased by an average of about 20% annually. From a country with a limited number of international publications, we currently have around 18,000 prestigious international publications per year. This demonstrates the strong potential and position of Vietnamese basic science in the international arena. The Ministry of Science and Technology is actively completing mechanisms and policies, as well as amending the law on science and technology. It is expected to encourage scientists, especially young scientists, to continue research and contribute to the national innovation and development. The Global Animal Welfare Organization, Four Paws, in collaboration with authorities, has just rescued the last black bear that was kept in captivity for nearly 20 years on a farm in Bingzhong province. The bear has received intensive medical care from the veterinary team and is currently being transported to the Ningbing Bear Conservation Facility. This facility is implementing a sustainable tourism model combined with experiential education to raise awareness about conservation. Visitors have the opportunity to witness the bear care process and their recovery. Vietnam has made the shortlist for numerous awards at the prestigious 31st World Travel Awards according to the Vietnam National Administration of Tourism, or VNAT, on May the 11th. The country is nominated for awards such as Asia's Leading Beach Destination, Asia's Leading Culture Destination, Asia's Leading Destination, Asia's Leading Heritage Destination, Leading Natural Destination, and Leading Youth Travel Destination in 2024. In addition, Ho Chi Minh City is a contender for Asia's Leading Business Travel Destination. Wahan Note has been nominated for Asia's Leading City Break Destination and Asia's Leading City Destination 2024. Other nominated localities include Hoi An and Hue for Asia's Leading Culture City Destination. Hazang and Hanam for Asia's leading emerging tourism destination, Phu Quoc for Asia's leading luxury island destination, and Mộc Châu for Asia's leading regional natural destination. Đà Nẵng and Ho Chi Minh City are also on the list for Asia's festival and event destination 2024.
In 2023, Da Nang was ranked second among the top 11 best destinations in Asia, according to a Condé Nast Traveler a magazine. However, few people would know that Da Nang was once a rather barren city. Thanks to the determination of its residents to effect change, the city has become a top destination for both locals and foreigners looking to work and settle somewhere. Before the year 2000, Da Nang was a locality that had no electricity, no clean water, no toilets and children had no birth certificates, preventing them from going to school. People could only use a single bridge to cross the Han River or ferries. Today, that is no longer the case. Da Nang is very comfortable and very worth staying in. I want to introduce this city to everyone in the world and invite them to come and enjoy all it has to offer. The city's urban space has tripled with synchronized traffic. As of 2023, the average income per capita was 4,300 US dollars, ranking fifth nationally. Da Nang has become an attractive destination thanks to its pristine nature, friendly people, international cultural events, and award winning architecture. We've only been here for a week so far. It's very good so far. At the moment, my verdict would be we would definitely come back for a longer stay. Da Nang is now among the top 10 most livable localities in the world based on infrastructure and environmental indicators. The annual average population growth rate of Da Nang is 2.5%, with tens of thousands of foreigners coming to settle down. As far as compared to anywhere else, it's, it's almost impossible to compare it because it's, you get all the benefits and you don't have any of the, the drawbacks. Culture permeates the people of Da Nang. Nothing is more worthwhile than contributing to the greater good. That's the spirit of Da Nang people. A more vibrant Da Nang is expected to soon emerge thanks to numerous urban projects. We will continue to invest in technical and social infrastructure with preferential policies to support the city's development. We aim to become a large, smart, and innovative city. After nearly three decades, Da Nang has become a centrally run city thanks to the determination and cooperation of people, businesses, and local authorities. The Phu Quoc Express joint stock company announced the debut of the Thang Long super ship boasting 1,017 seats and embarking on a new route from Ho Chi Minh City to Côn Đảo and Vũng Tàu starting May the 14th. Ticket prices for the Saigon Côn Đảo route will range from 615,000 Vietnamese dongs to 1.1 million Vietnamese dongs per trip depending on passenger type, ticket class and departure time. Under favorable weather conditions, the cruise from Ho Chi Minh City, Saigon Hiệp Phước Port, Nha, Nha Bè District to um, Bến Đam Port, Côn Đảo District of Bà Rịa Vũng Tàu Province is ex estimated to take approximately five hours. May the 19th this year marks the 65th anniversary of the Chuang Sun Trail. Also known as the Ho Chi Minh Trail, this strategic logistics line was responsible for transporting supplies from the north to the southern battlefields. For 16 years, from 1959 to 1975, the Chuang Sun Trail was a living testament to the dedication uh, and self-sacrifice of the Vietnamese Army forces with the spirit of Uncle Ho soldiers. They sacrificed their youth to pave the way for the trail and, at the same time, created a road to the historic victory on April the 30th, 1975. After the Geneva Accord were issued in July 1954, Vietnam was divided, making the western region of Quang Chi the only communication line between the revolutionaries of the two regions. It was insufficient for the transportation of large supplies and human resources to the southern battlefield. Hence, on May 19, 1955, the Party Central Committee established Corp 559, codenamed Quang Chung, with the goal of ensuring prompt support for the Southern Revolutionary Movement. This trail was the lifeblood for the delivery of millions of tons of materials and millions of people into the South to fight. Without this trail, our victory on the Southern battlefields would have come much later. 
To open this historic trail, soldiers in Trường Sơn had to face immensely difficult terrain and a harsh climate, as well as deadly diseases of the time such as malaria, all while enduring derived conditions. The fierce bombings, hardships and sacrifices of Trường Sơn soldiers during wartime were immeasurable. The enemy laid bombs to block the trail every month. Each day, they laid six waves of B-52 bombs, in addition to other types of bombs. Trường Sơn soldier transported supplies mainly at night to avoid enemy detection and raid. However, they also transported supplies during the day through thousands of kilometers of a hidden route shrouded by the majestic nature of Trường Sơn. Despite all difficulty, Trường Sơn soldiers promptly transported over 1.5 million tons of weapons, food and medicines, as well as more than 5.5 million tons of gasoline to the southern battlefield. They also ensured the delivery of over two million officers and soldiers marching in and out of the southern battlefield and the other front. Commander Dong Xingwen said, if one in ten cars manages to reach the front, that is already a victory. The soldiers of Trường Sơn, with their unwavering determination to maintain the trail's flow, demonstrated their significant role in the liberation of the South and the reunification of Vietnam. The legendary Trường Sơn Trail symbolizes a monumental victory in Vietnam's resistance war against the U.S. The trail embodies the will of the Vietnamese people to triumph and the heroic spirit of Uncle Ho soldier. Coming up next in our world news, Russian president dominates new minister of defense. And Jordan hosts eager lion military exercise. Russian President Vladimir Putin has replaced his defense minister Sergei Shoigu with former first deputy prime minister Andrei Belusov, 65 years old, who is also a civilian economist. Meanwhile, Putin also signed a decree on Sunday appointing Shoigu as secretary of Russia's Security Council. According to Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov, the Russian president's decision to bring a non-military official to lead the ministry of defense was driven by a need for innovation and progress. The Kremlin spokesman also praised Belusov for successfully leading the previous Russian Ministry of Economic Development. According to the Russian Constitution, the Minister of Defense will be personally proposed by the President and will need to be approved by Russia's upper house of parliament, the Federation Council. The multinational military exercise Eager Lion kicked off on Sunday in Jordan with the participation of Army, Navy and Air Forces from 33 countries, including the U.S., France and the U.K. The exercise is expected to last 10 days, encompassing anti-terrorism and air defense training. According to a Jordanian a military spokesperson, the goal of the exercise is to address territory terrorist organizations, the proliferation of drones and weapons of mass destruction of biological, chemical and nuclear nature, as well as major disasters. This year's Eagle Lion is the largest in scale since its inception in 2011, attracting the participation of 10 Arab countries and 23 other nations. And now let's take a look at the weather forecast.
And that's it for this edition of VTV News. Thank you very much for watching. To rewatch a program, you can download VTV Go from App Store or Google Play or tune in our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash VTV4Go. Goodbye for now.